everyone, it's Kristen, and today marks the finale, which I'm already sad about, of our Bite My Palette collab with Tiffany from Southern Gals Designs. So, today we're going to be finishing up our journals. To do that, we'll need to do something with that front and back cover. Of course, we'll be completing our third page, which will complete our story, and we'll be using this, we'll be using more of that, but I have to say, check it out, I am going through my stash, I'm pretty proud about that. So, we'll be doing that, and then at the end, we will have our final flip. I also wanna say, again, apologize for repeating myself, but it is so true, you've made this so fun. I've had so much fun with you, Tiffany, and so much fun hearing from all of you. Thank you for the love during this collab. So. I will be doing this on my end, Tiffany will be doing the same on her end, and I can't wait to see how it all turns out. As always, I want you to know that I appreciate you and thank you for coming along. We're gonna to begin today by coating the entire front and back cover with a thick coat of gesso from Golden. This is obviously in black and it will dry matte. I don't want any shimmer, shine, or color to take away from that little pie piece right there, which should be the star. So I'm using another piece of paper to cut a circle in the same size and shape there we have it, and I'll end up whittling this down just a little bit so that I can create a border for it to sit on top of. There, she's all trimmed up, and now I want to create that border using the larger circle we just cut out. Because this is a collab, I want the central piece that will go on the front cover to represent both of us. So although her pie piece will go on top and be the star, I figured we should have a glittery underpinning to represent me. So I'm doing that with a no-shed glitter fabric. I'm covering the entire surface mainly because I want it to be even for that first piece to sit on top of. So I've cut it all out, I'm gluing it all down, and then I'll put her pie piece on top. I'm pulling out the E6000 for this one. It's an incredibly strong adhesive. It goes on clear, it dries clear, and it will be a little bit sturdier than just the glue stick, especially since this will be going on the front cover. So I've got my glittery border with her pie shape, and now to address that center. How about a little Swarovski crystal? Okay, now that the main element is complete, I want to distress the front and back cover a little bit more with sandpaper. I like how you can see the white paper as you bend the journal, and I want to create a little bit more. There we have, a little white peeking through. But I'm not done yet. How about adding a really subtle detail with some black rub-on letters? These rub-on letters were actually from my father-in-law's stash. He's since passed, but he used to do a lot of art, so I like to pull out some of his supplies and use them when I can. And I can barely see this word, so it is far from perfect, but I'm using different fonts to create the word bite all over that front and back cover, and you'll really be able to see the detail when light shines upon it. There you go. Not much, but just a little something special. And now for our final page, and I know I wanna use this piece of paper right here. And I don't even know what it is, but it looks as if it's some sort of house plans. I don't know if it's drafting paper or if it was hand drawn, but I do know that I see a window right there. And in this collab, it is kind of like having a play date, right? And in our first page, we talked about the two little girls getting together. In the second page, someone was being blamed for spilling ink. And in the third page, we have to say goodbye, right? So how about taking one of her little girls and one of my little girls and cutting out these windows so that both figures can look towards each other? Hello, 
cutie. There she is. And I'm so sorry I had to rip her in half. I really did. That was painful. But all I'm out for is that little eyeball so that she can peek through the window. I had to enlarge it just a bit, but I want to make sure that I can see the entire eye through that little peephole. And, yep, perfect. Now I've trimmed it a bit and I'm going to glue it onto the back side of that piece of paper. So again, only the eyeball will be peeking through. So now that she's staring out the window, I need to have a little girl of mine staring out the window. And I was going to draw an eye, but I saw some stashes of my old copies around and this shape looked perfect for this little girl. So I see a tiny little eyeball, a bit of a nose peeking out, and once I've got her arranged just as I want it, I now have my little girl looking out the window towards her little girl. Now, unlike previous pages where I've taken bits and pieces of collage material from Tiffany's stash, this time I want to cover most of the page with this whole piece of paper. I don't want to lose the house shape. That's a really important element in the rest of the story. So I'm going to adhere the entire piece to the page. Once I've got it all glued down and I feel secure, making sure that I've also addressed that center piece so that it's not wrinkling or bubbling, but I've allowed enough for the fold, if you will. I'm going to brayer it all down, and then I will trim the edges simply by ripping. I don't want a clean cut, and there are deckled edges, so I'm going to go with it and rip them away. Now I have a challenge. How do I bring both the large collage piece into the rest of the journal? How do I make them blend? Well, I'm going to start off by adding with my finger, as I've done with the rest of the pages, a little Liquitex gesso to all of the exposed pieces of paper. I want to fortify them, but I also want to make them a little grungier for something to come. Because I didn't love how that finger blending looked, it was too smooth, I decided to pull out a tiny little palette knife, which by the way, I learned about this palette knife through watching Tiffany a long time ago. So I'm pulling it out and I'm using it so that now I have a bit of a grungier surface to work with. Now, on to bringing some of that pink. It was already there, it wasn't just me. I do find ways to bring in pink, but this one came naturally because I wanted to blend the papers together. So I've got a little bit of that Bria Reese ink and I'm blending it with my fingers into both the foreground and the background. We're getting there, but we're not done yet. Now we need to address warmth. And I'm going to do that by taking those walnut ink crystals and some yellow oxide by Golden. This is an acrylic that I'm going to use a lot of water with. I really want it like a wash. So I water it down and then I'm going to apply it on top of the paper as well as the rest of the background. That way I can make sure that they all blend together perfectly. So I'm going to do a little wash with this golden and then I'll pull out those walnut ink crystals again. The greatest things about those crystals is that you have instant grunge, instant depth. Just sprinkle a little bit of that onto the paper, spritz it with water, and you have some texture right away. When I'm done with that, I'll take it as a wash itself just by adding water to the crystals. There, I'm doing it now. And then I will be pooling or puddling that all over the page. Now, that's not a technical term. I just made it up. But what I mean is I really want it to sit on top of the paper and not be completely blended in. When it dries, we're going to get all of that depth and dimension because it's going to dry in puddles. Everything is dry and I think it's well blended. I'm pleased with the results, but now we need to bring that piece of paper all the way and extend it to the rest of the page. I'm doing that by simply using a ruler and pretending that the original line went all the way from the left to the right. And now, 
How about creating a door? I wanted to use this piece of cardboard. I wasn't exactly sure how we was going to do it. And then I figured we have some bulk that we need to add to the bottom of the page. It's not well balanced yet. So how about using a cardboard door? I'm just going to cut it to the shape of the existing door from the piece of paper itself and see what happens. We've auditioned our little door and I like it, so we're going to add it to the page. But before we do, the little nooks and crannies look naked. And to avoid that nakedness, we're going to use something that we already used on page one and that's it. The glitter that we used on the tip of the feather is perfect for the little tiny cardboard crannies that we have here. And now I need to address something that's been bugging me, and that is I don't like the shape of the little peephole I cut out for Tiffany's eye. It's too angular, and I need to fix it. So I'm simply taking another piece of scrap paper and creating a new window. This time, I'm going to cut out a little circle and then rip that shape. If you can't make it perfect, make it perfectly imperfect. It always works. <laughs> The window is fixed in my eye and now I'm going to add another element to bring the foreground into the background to make everything blend together. This is actually an aqua marker so if I wanted to add water to it it will almost become like a watercolor but I don't. I ended up just using it as a marker itself but I like how transparent it is. You can really see the background through it. So I'm fortifying the lines of the roof and then I'm adding some of that same color to the front door if you will will and then also to the little window of Tiffany's so that everything complements one another. Next I'm going to further fortify the lines of the window and the door with my very very favorite. This is the glittering gel ink. I love that it doesn't add any color but it really does define the lines especially when the light hits it. So I'll go around each of those little shapes that already exist on the paper itself have a little cheat sheet there. I'm just following the lines and I love the way it really makes each of them pop. Now as we wrap up this page, I want to do two things. One, I want to use this fabric. I've been wanting to use it since the beginning, but I haven't yet, so I'm going to incorporate it into this page. But it also helps in a second way, and that is to create balance onto the page. Just as we will with that cardboard door, I want to add a little something to the bottom of the page, something to draw your eye down, and this piece of fabric is perfect. As you can see, I'm going to scrunch one edge up a little bit so that it's a little different than the other side, which I've just simply laid down with that glue stick. Now on to the cardboard door. I'm going to put that down and then use the excuse of the fact that there's some blank spots right on the door to add more bits and pieces. What? Giblets? Giblets? Tell me, Tiffany. <laughs> onto that door because this is some of my favorite of the pieces that were sent to me. On to the final touches, and I want to use some of that pink thread that we had on the first page here next to the scrunched up fabric on the last page. And as I do that, I get thread on page two as well, which is perfect because that means I have pink thread on each page of our book. Next, we need to add a little text. And I found the perfect sentiment from my favorite vintage book. I use this all the time. And the first thing I'm tearing out is, sorry to part. That is really appropriate. Down with the rest of this text, it says, don't you forget about these good times. I know I certainly won't. One more thing. If you thought I went an entire video without using... That, 
I didn't. Don't want to disappoint you. <laughs> you guys, thank you for everything. Tiffany has created a playlist of all of our videos for this Bite My Palette collab. It'll be at the end. If you missed anything, go check it out. Thanks again to Tiffany. Thank you guys for all of the love. And until next time.